Hey guys, cheap crafting back at you tonight. Uh, this is going to be a short video, surprisingly short for armor construction. Now the reason for that is, I'm just going to show you basic cloth armor. And cloth armor is really simple. You got the basics of the garb down, and you got the basics of the weapons down, but armor, if you want to survive more than four seconds against a heavily armored warrior on the field, you kind of need it. And if your class allows armor and you're not wearing it, there's a reason classes allow armor or don't allow armor. The classes with, that don't allow armor, they've got the abilities to make up for it. A wizard doesn't really need a bunch of armor when he's throwing ice balls or fireballs at you across the field. But I cannot tell you how many times I've won a fight because someone came up for me behind and hit my armor and it broke the armor. But I was able to turn around and kill him because I was still alive. Okay? Thick armor saves lives. I'm so sorry for that one. <laughs> Anyways. So, the reason why the video tonight is not going to be very long is because I'm not going to show you all the in and outs of armor. I'm not going to show you a big build. I'm not going to tell you this is how you need to make it. Well, okay, I am going to tell you this is how you need to make it. But I'm not going to give you a specific shape. And the reason for that is armor, like mead, is highly customizable. Now, I gave you the basic garb and how to make the basic garb because I wasn't going to tell you, here, stitch two pieces of cloth together, throw it over you, that's your garb. Well, that, that required a little bit more. Because when I was starting out, I didn't know how to do it. And so I'm going off the chance that people watching this are just as big of a dumbass as me. By the way, we now have six followers on this channel, so welcome to the shit show, extra follower. Back to the point. Cloth armor, I'm just going to show you how to make an armor plate. And what I like to do is... I've got my samurai armor actually around here somewhere. Huh. I'm, I'll do a video with that in it some other time. But I actually made samurai armor. And it is amp guard legal. What cloth armor has to be is it has to be English, easily distinguishable from your normal garb. So you can't have basically an oversized shirt. It doesn't count. They have to be able to tell that you're wearing armor. It's one to two points. One armor point is minimum for cloth armor. If it meets the requirements, they have to give you one. If you do a heavy, very well done piece of cloth armor, the champion can make the decision to classify it as two points of armor. So remember that. Do your best. And if you need to, just make it really heavy. The Besides being e easily distinguishable from garb, the other requirement is when compressed, it has to be one sixteenth of an inch. That is very easy to do. Back when I was hand sewing it, I just put four layers of cloth in and I was fine. So as long as you make sure there's enough cloth layers and you kind of go along this recipe, then you can stir it any way you like. And back to the samurai armor, why that I brought that up is because it's not one full set of armor. The chest pieces are, I've got about this much of it being actually solid armor. That much is solid armor. The rest are plates or strips woven in. And so if you know how to make that cloth plate, well, you can just make a bunch of them and then arrange it as you like. So that's what we're going to do. Now, again, I love, I'm always about comfort. Even though this is going to be touching you, if you've got a rough inside layer, then you're going to feel it through your garb. Garb's not the thick stuff here. So, I've got my nice, easy little cloth. Little cloth. I said little, I meant soft. So I got my little soft cloth. This is what we're going to be using for the outside. Now, you want something that's... The reason why I'm not using this, even though this would be perfect for the outside layer, this cloth is durable. You saw the video, 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 video about me making the garb. You see that I use this for the exterior layer of the garb. And we need it to be easily distinguishable from our regular garb, so we can't really use the same color. That's why my base garb, not the stuff I made before, I've actually got white pants and shirt, and the armor I have on is red. So people can tell that I'm wearing armor. So we're not going to worry about that, so we're going to use this. It's a little tougher, actually, which I'm liking. I wasn't able to use the, like, dragon scale type thing my girlfriend, the fabric my girlfriend has, or fiancé has, because she's using it. She's going to make stuff out of it. I'm like, fuck. 
Because that would li that would really look good as armor. I'm getting off track. But we're going to use this. Now, this is the inside layer. It's almost like a light carpet. It's so a lot thinner. But it'd be something like a drop cloth that you put on down. Which is perfectly fine for our purposes. Got the tough inside layer. It's going to make it really easy to sew. We got the outside layer that's soft. Still counts as cloth. So the champion can't get too pissed off at us. We got a lot of it. So it's going to cover our mistakes. Then we got the night... We got... I always like to put two padding layers in. One of a Remember, when it's compressed, it has to be one sixteenth of an inch, which really isn't too much. Like, it's very, very hard to go below that. You, like I said, you put four layers of cloth together. That's going to be over one sixteenth compressed. But we want to be sure. So I've got a tougher layer, and then, like is in so many anime, I've got a filler layer. And this is the soft filler layer. This is going to go... Uh, I'm going to go ahead and put this right next to our inside layer. So first layer, second layer, third layer, then we're going to have the fourth one. And the fourth one's the exterior shell. So basically, your armor plates, they're not going to be elaborate. They're not... So we're just going to do a basic square. That's how simple we're going to be. We're just going to do a square. If you can do a square plate of armor... You can put a bunch of square plates of armor together. You can make them walking juggernaut. Think of chainmail. It's just a bunch of little rings. So, what we're going to do is we're not going to sew one layer. I'm not going to take this layer, cut a square out of it, and then do our filler layer and sew those together, then sew the next layer, then sew the next. Although, admittedly, when I hand sew, I did do that because hand sewing takes a long time. But we don't have to because we got our machine. The machine's going to do the work for us. But to compensate for any mistakes, I'm going to make a smaller square. And so you'd have to make more of them. But you're compensating volume for accuracy. Always compensate volume for accuracy. With the exception of house fires. Probably should put water volume on there rather than... Just, let's go ahead and spray a little bit of water directly on the fire. Not that's that entire house. So, and we're just going to eyeball it. We're not being fancy. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go, well, I kind of want to make this a chess piece. So I'm going to make an angled part here. The bottom is going to be flatter. And the angle, the reason we're going to make the, basically a, almost an arrow pointing up, is because we wanted to go right here. We want to leave our arms free, and that way, if I decide to make a back plate, I'll be able to do straps right on over and just connect it in, and it'll look really nice. Which, actually, that's how I made most of my armor before. No, I have not progressed past this level. See, I'm telling you guys, this is how you make the cheap, cheap stuff. This is how I make all of mine. So, you guys, shoot for the stars. I'm just going to be doing what I know. So, yeah, I lied. We're not going to make a square. That's the point of it. Unless I want to second guess myself here in a second, because I'm realizing that I actually am going to make a chess piece and deciding whether or not I actually want to put that much effort into it tonight. Do I want to put... No, I'm not going to put that much effort into tonight. Maybe later I will, but I'm going to go back on going back on my work word and make a square. And then I'm going to save save your larger strips. Again, you can either if you become a magic caster, you can use those to fill up your balls. Or if you don't be a magic caster, you can either give them to magic caster friends or the larger strips you can actually make accessories. I'm starting to re regret eyeballing this. Because this is not a clean cut. But if you wanted a clean cut, you wouldn't be here. Let's be honest. This is cheap. This is fast. When you're past a level one adventurer, then you can go to a different shop. Basically what it boils down to. So, we got a rectangle. I'm going back, I'm going back, I'm going back on my word, something like that. I don't know, it gets really confusing. So, then what we're going to do, we're going to... Haul the filler on over. We 
I'm just going to chop it right on down. If you want to, rather than doing this, I suppose if you're actually caring about it looking all nice, you could actually write out measurements and carefully cut the cloth, maybe get some good scissors. You guys have seen how much effort I put into stuff. I'm not going to pretend otherwise. Trim it on up. Try to get as accurate as you can. You you will end up trimming stuff off. Just like you'll end up, if you follow any of my directions, you'll follow, end up trimming something off. Now, if you get really skilled, you can make like a very heavy jacket. Cloth jacket. I guess it wouldn't need to be very heavy at that point. But, you could make some actually... Cloth armor is very basic, but if you're a creative individual, or no creative individuals, you actually are able to do some really cool things with it. So to make cool armor, you don't have to go ahead and have metal armor, you don't have to have chain mail, you don't have to have plate mail, you don't have to spend $300 on a set of armor. You don't have to know someone who's good with blacksmithing, although if you do, congratulations, go to them all the time. But you can really make some cool things with cloth armor. I mean, think of all the costumes of, the, of cosplayers you see out there that are made with fabric. That's what you can do. All it takes is a little imagination and patience. Plenty of patience. Let's be honest, the imagination is kind of second there compared to the patients. So, I just dropped something. I'm not sure what it is. I got a shelf on over there. So then, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to cut out a larger square. Then we're going to get this heap of cloth out of the way. And we're just going to trim it on down. The thing you really want to concentrate on when you're making cloth armor is you want to make it movable. And yes, despite how you, anyone who knows anything about cloth, which I hope that's the majority of you guys, you've, you've been on planet Earth, you should know what cloth is. But when I say make it so you can move around and you're like, no shit. It's very, very, very hard to go ahead and not make cloth something you can move can't move around it. But you saw the uh, glorified potato sack I made. I didn't put enough. I thought I put enough so my arms could go through, but apparently I forgot that arms aren't just lengthwise, they're round too. And I underestimated how round my arms are. So I'm going to have to go back one of these days and actually lengthen that out at a couple inches there so I can move my arms around. Which is why you want to err on the caution of space. Put plenty of space in there. Remember, not being able to move around is for idiots who wear plate mail and get their... <laughs> Just get rattled like a tin can. There's one guy who came uh, back in Aurora Grove up in Alaska and he came with... he had plate mail. He actually had nice plate mail. He had a long, great sword. Long sword, great sword somewhere in there. It looked to me like a great sword, but that's because I'm short. And a shield. And it was actually a pretty decent shield. And I had no armor on. Did I, no, I actually had my one point of cloth armor for the chest on. I made it kind of look like a vest from Naruto. Because I am a weeb. And I... He named me Ricochet Rabbit after that day because I would simply hold my shield out. He had his he was left-handed, so he had his shield in his right. So I'd hold my shield out and kind of block his so he couldn't maneuver it around. And I'd do the same thing with the arm. With the arm. So he was trying to move his shield and I wasn't letting him. And he'd try to bring his greatsword around and I would take my short sword, stick it in 
right next to the handle, shove it away, and just start beating him all over. Sorry, dryer was yelling at me. And then he tried shifting his uh, shield to his non uh, sword to his non-dominant hand because he got irritated with my sword being right there. Because, to be honest, I wasn't getting that many hits in until he moved it to his non-dominant hand. Because now I just had my shield out and I was blocking the sword. And it was a lot easier to get around his shield than his sword. So, got, don't get me wrong. Guys in plate mail that know what they're doing are terrifying and I will avoid them on the battlefield at all costs. Because there's only two types of guys that wear heavy armor. First type, I am a medieval war enthusiast. I am just doing this amt god. And I shall wear heavy armor because it shall make me invincible on the battlefield. And those guys are really easy to get. Because they are relying on their armor to protect them. But you gotta remember, you can only have a maximum of six points armor. Which means you could have... Let's do something insane. Say you're one punch man. Or the, the strength level there. And you're wearing four inches thick steel. That's still only going to count as six points armor. So I only need to hit you in the back or the chest six times to get through that. And, if you're not able to move around, it's going to be ridiculously easy for me, because I'm not a defensive fighter. Well, technically with the shield I am, but I like to avoid the strikes rather than get hit by them. So as you're clumsily swinging your sword around, I'm going to pop in there, and I'm going to break your armor quicker than you can say, oh shit. Maybe you'll have to say two oh shits, depending on how much armor you're wearing. But... That's the first type, and that's the guys I love, because I feel invincible. I feel like a combat god going up against them. Like, <laughs> idiots, you came, you're in my hood now. I apologize for that. I'm never going to say that again. It just sounds weird. You're in my hood. I've never once said that in my life. I guess I've said it twice now. Anyways, point being. Then we've got the second utter terrifying. We've got the veterans, the ones that have been there for a long time. Who have learned how to walk around in full plate mail and whose muscles are quite developed enough to be able to handle walk around in said plate mail and then turn scouts like me or healer when I play healer or scout turn healers or scouts like me into mincemeat there is no healing a pile of hamburger avoid those guys okay just let the archers or mages handle them that's just pretty good if you go up against a fully armored guy, you want distance and magic. You, you don't want to try to beat him. I learned that lesson the hard way. And remember, in Amp Guard, groin shots are legal. And if they have a bunch of time to target you, they are going to target your groin. So yeah, leave a uh, plate mail to, for the... Uh, either other guys in plate mail or for range support. That's why they make range support. So you don't have to learn the lessons the hard way. Also, on that, on a completely unrelated note, cups are very good to wear. Like it's actually a very good idea. It's a heavy contact sport. Save your gonads. Okay, so that's all about set up. And now, let's actually flip this over. Can't you? And we are just going to sew this on down, then trim it up, and attempt to line it up. But they're not doing a very good job. All right, I'll bring this on over. Oh. Reginald must still be in the bath. Alright. Honestly, I think that's the biggest difference about whether you hand sew or machine sew your stuff. Because hand sewing, I always just 
did it on the edges because it was a lot easier for me to do it that way. But that meant I was able to hold it. I didn't have to trim. I just eyed it as I went, figured out what I needed to do. And I never really had to trim it because it was already hemmed. And with machine sewing, it's not the same because I'm going in a little and I'll, I actually have to trim my pieces now. But I guess we all have to adapt with the times now that I'm actually crafting stuff pretty constantly. And it's just necessary. Rain, I'm actually getting it on this side. Bless you! I just want to kind of... It was my fiancé sneezing, but I just... Want to mentally imagine the fact that one of you guys... Somebody sneezed watching this video right as I said bless you. And they're just like, what the hell? It makes my heart happy. That's the re this is the reason you can't really see it very well, but the different claws obviously are different, differently stretchy. Again, we use very precise terms here at Cheap Crafting. Oops. So the interior actually cloth is now being very, very annoying as I'm just trying to get it to lay down. There we go. And so it's actually stretched out differently. So that's why it's a really good idea to use small plates of armor, is because if it's massively, oh shit. Ran out of cloth on the bottom, so almost done. But stuff like that. And you can see the difference right here. This was all lined up perfectly when I started. As you can clearly see, it's not perfectly lined up anymore. So small plates, Smaller mistakes. And you can just fix it as you go. Don't exactly have that advantage with bigger plates. Although if you're skilled enough to be able to do bigger plates, by all means, do bigger plates. Give yourself less work. If you're like me, do the small plates. You will thank yourself later. correctly. <sighs> Just gotta thread the bobbin real fast. And the reason why I'm not gonna pause the video and do this is because I'm still not skilled with the video editing software and I would have to shift my freaking shift. That's exactly what I meant to say. I would have to send the video rather than just uploading it directly to YouTube for my phone. I would have to put it, send it to my computer, video edit software, splice it together. That's the reason that the garb video is actually in two different video segments when I was originally just planning to do one because I had technical difficulties, aka the bobbin, and I decided, fuck it, I'm just going to go ahead and edit it later. Well, I didn't actually realize how large videos are. Again, I'm new to this. And so it was akin to the internet laughing at me as I'm staring at my meat video, which I did three segments on, taking... Fuck, that took an hour, hour and a half to upload. My internet's not the greatest, but it should have gone faster than that. It's just my computer being slow. But getting it to the video, splicing it together, then uploading it to YouTube took... It took a lot longer than I expected. Both the armor videos combined were about, still about twice the size of the meat video, and I just was able to upload them in like half the time, if that. So, that's the reason I'm not just going to save it. I mean, pause it. Okay, there we go.
next time I shall ensure the bobbin is full. Considering we're going on 25 minutes, I was not expecting the video to go on that long. My apologies. And I've got a video waiting for me in the next, a movie waiting for me in the next room. And I work tomorrow, so you can see why I want to wrap this up. Because I don't want to be in up very late. I like my sleep. We've established I'm a lazy person. Well, willingly lazy. Okay, now we're just going to thread this real fast. Thankfully, I get faster each and every time I do this. Well, this part's annoying. Get in there. There we go. Okay, now we're going to pick up where we left off. Right, fuck it, I'm just gonna sew it on down there. Go the other way. It's gonna cause a bit of wrinkle, but what the? Okay, there we go, foot up. Get out. Make a tangled mess, because why the hell not? Something happened to the bobbin. But it held together long enough to do its job. So. And making an actual set of cloth armor would be taking an insane amount of time. And I don't have, I'm trying to enjoy the last of my day off, so I don't really have that time in my hand right now. You guys, length are re less important to me than a movie. I hope you know that. I can't believe I said that with a straight face. That's beautiful. Loses all six followers. Oh no, what will I do now? My influencer status has been ruined. Anyways, that'll skid aside. There we go. One cloth plate. I say that's about and that's within the or safely passing the one sixteenth an inch guidelines. It's actually pretty thick. A nice hard cover. Nice and soft, so it doesn't rough up to whoever's wearing it. Because you'll get roughed enough with so uh, have that roughed up enough with swords then. So you don't want your armor doing that. Yeah, we'll just pretend that's what I was meaning to say. Anyways, I think, actually, I will go ahead and make a full set of armor out of this. Not on camera. <laughs> but I'll go ahead and make a full set. And Actually, our park, the AmpGuard Park Freehold that I was petitioning to get opened here. AmpGuard LLC. I think they ended LLC. They approved it. So once the weather warms up, and I actually figure out where the stupid fitness park is, because it's not where I thought it was. Anyways, that little minor detail aside, we're going to be actually do going out there. I've got a few friends that are like, fuck yeah, let's beat each other with padded sticks. So we're going to go do that, and I'll take some videos about the both the samurai armor and this stuff in action. I actually might just do a full set out of this and use it, because... That samurai armor I do for cosplay videos. But anyways, that's the, your basic plate. You can shape it however you want. My advice is to make it out of smaller plates. You don't want to try to do the full set. Like, you don't want to try to make it out of one piece. If you can do that, holy crap. I can't do that. So, I'm going to do this and it's going to be the... Yes, now I won't be stacked at this one specific spot. I'm going to make the rest of the plates on down. And that The reason also, the advantage of having multiple plates is you can bend. It's a lot bendier. Is that even? It's easier to bend. Yeah, that easier to bend and more maneuverable than just one solid piece. So, and remember how I said that maneuverability was kind of a big point? Do multiple plates, it's maneuverable. Anyways, that's going to be all for the Simple Crafting, Cheap Crafting, Cheap Crafting, that's the name of it. Cheap Crafting for Beginners. I keep forgetting my own chest. 
that's all of it for tonight. I hope you enjoyed the video. Right, give us a like and follow, and I don't give a shit. Spread the word. Use the information as you will. I updated the bio. I don't give a shit if you guys take this and don't credit me. And just take the information and run with it. I don't I don't care about it being credited. The only time I'm ever going to call the shit bullshit on it is if people start using it to make money for themselves. Just go spread the word. Don't try making a buck on the side doing it. Okay? Catch y'all later. Get a camera.